Hear me on this. We are at a time in history when you can no longer sit back and just let other folks do it. You cannot expect black women to be perfect and save the world. The Lord is completing us. We are not perfect. We need your prayers. We need to be allowed to stumble. We need grace. With that kind of support, we will move mountains and do Jesus' will. Stumbling all the way. <laughs> well, apparently that stumbling involved this corrupt DA not only having an affair with a prosecutor, but most of all, they both allegedly profited off the indictments against Trump. It's but the latest in the overall collapse of the cases against number 45, soon to be number 47. And we're going to see precisely why the lawfare liberals hope would save their hides is imploding right before their panicked eyes. Hey, gang, it's me, Dr. Steve, back in the studio, as you can see. 2024 promises to be absolutely epic. I will be your patriot professor, helping to think better so you can feel better all the way throughout the year. So make sure to smack that bell and subscribe button. Also, as many of you know, the Grinches at Google completely demonetized our channel, but you have stepped into the gap. Literally thousands of you have come to our aid and support and in turn have stuck it to big tech overlords by joining our Insiders Club. Now, we all know that demonetization and cancellations are all efforts by the big tech overlords to separate us from one another, to make us feel like we're alone in a digital solitary confinement, to demoralize us and discourage us and dishearten us. And I'm here to tell you, you are not alone. And if you click on that link below right now, you'll know that you will never be alone. I'm calling on all of you to join the thousands of patriots that have already stuck it to big tech by joining our Insiders Club. For just five bucks a month, you and I will have the security of knowing that our relationship will never be severed. This is how we bypass the big tech overlords. Through our Insiders Club, our relationship with one another is safe and secure. Click on that link below right now. Join the club and join the rising army of thousands who are taking our nation back each and every week together. More and more pundits are coming to the conclusion that the lawfare efforts against Trump carried out by our corrupt ruling establishment are indeed backfiring. And they're backfiring largely because of how desperate these fledgling cases against Trump are all appear to be. We have to remember here, as Victor Davis Hanson has recently pointed out, none of these indictments would ever have happened had Trump decided not to run for president again. These indictments are deliberately intended to keep him out of the White House. All of the trial dates have been deliberately synchronized so as to ensure that the front-running Trump, who again is beating both his fellow Republicans and Biden in every single poll out there, all the trial dates are being synchronized so as to keep Trump tied up in courtrooms and effectively out of the 2024 campaign trail. In other words, they're deliberately putting him on trial to keep him off the trail. But one by one, all of these cases appear to be collapsing. And the key here again as VDH reminds us, as each desperate attempt at lawfare ends up failing, that doesn't return things to zero. It's not like we just go back to the way things were before the use of weaponized legalism. No, all of these corrupt efforts to take Trump out serve as force multipliers for each other. The more they try to persecute Trump, the more his poll numbers go up, the more they discredit themselves, the more voters see Democrats as the true insurrectionists who are threatening the integrity of our democratic republic. Let's start with Fannie Willis, who you saw at the beginning of the video. She's trying to hide behind the veneer of religiosity to shield her from the allegations that have turned her case into shambles. She is being accused of allegedly having an ongoing affair with one of her subordinates, Fulton County Special Prosecutor Nathan Wade, she then appointed Wade as prosecutor in Trump's case, even though, get this, even though he's never tried a single felony case in his entire career. He was previously just a personal injury accident lawyer. 
So she's allegedly having this affair with the prosecutor that she picked to lead the case against Trump. Then she turned around and allegedly paid him an inordinate amount of money to the tune of hundreds of thousands of dollars. And guess what they together did with that money? They went on extravagant vacations and getaways like a Royal Caribbean cruise and the like. So when all is said and done, Fannie Willis and her alleged boy toy are being accused of personally profiting off this sham prosecution against Trump. That's the key allegation in all of this. Fannie Willis and her alleged lover have been financially benefiting off this sham prosecution. So her case is an absolute shambles. What about Jack Smith? Well, in the case of the classified documents and Mar-a-Lago, more and more realizing he's trying to convict Trump of a crime that Trump constitutionally cannot possibly commit. Trump is president as the commander in chief. He alone has ultimate decision making authority as to what documents are classified, not the vice president, you know, like Joe Biden and his boxes of classified documents in his garage, not the secretary of state like Hillary Clinton. Only the president has that ultimate authority and thus he's being accused of a crime he can't legally commit. And the J6 case is as flimsy of a case as you can get, especially given how Trump called for peace and to cooperate with authorities. But to make matters even worse, Smith filed a desperate appeal to the Supreme Court a few weeks back where he bypassed all lower appellate courts and instead went straight to the Supreme Court, imploring the Supremes to make a special ruling, an expedited ruling on whether President Trump can claim immunity from criminal charges for actions taken as president. And the Supreme Court basically told Jack Smith to take a hike. They're not ruling on Trump's immunity claim anytime soon. And as long as that ruling is in the hands of the Supreme Court, Jack Smith's cases against Trump are all effectively stalled. Then, of course, you've got the absurd case against Trump in New York, led by their corrupt Attorney General Letitia James and that freeze miser judge, That's all based on the ridiculous notion that Mar-a-Lago is only valued at $18 million. Here's Kevin O'Leary of Shark Tank completely dismantling the sham case on CNN. Well, let's leave out Trump for a minute and let's leave out politics and just talk about what happens in real estate development anywhere. So if you're a developer and you've got a building on, on a block anywhere in America and it's worth, let's say, $500 million and you want to build a building right beside it, You go to the bank and say, this building is worth $500 million. I'd like to borrow a construction finance loan against this asset. And I want you to tell me it's worth $500 million too. And the bank negotiates with you and says, well, no, we think it's worth $400 million. And you fight it out. You're always trying to show your assets in the brightest light with the sunshine you can possibly determine for them. You want them to be worth the very most because you're only going to get a 40 or 50 percent loan to value, as it's called. Then you borrow that money. In the case of a $500 million asset, maybe you get $250 million, and you build a new building with a construction finance loan. And so that's what this case is all about. What, and, and by the way, forget about Trump. Every single real estate developer everywhere on earth does this. They always talk about their asset being worth a lot, and the bank says no. And that's just the way it is. So in this case, when I'm trying to figure out, and I'm not pro or con, or I don't care about the politics, who lost money? Nobody. The bank got paid back the construction finance loan, and a new building was built. And if, if you're going to sue this case and win, you got to sue every real estate developer everywhere. This is all they do. This is what they do all day long, every day. So I don't think this thing will ever survive appeal, regardless of what the fine is. This doesn't even make sense. Well, there you have it. it. Doesn't make any sense. It doesn't. In other words, the whole sham case against Trump is supposedly misleading banks and insurance companies, all of whom got paid back every penny, penny and then some. This whole sham case is absurd. It makes no sense. And then, of course, there's Alvin Bragg, the corrupt Manhattan DA. You remember him, right? He's the one who's trying to charge Trump with NDA agreements he made with Stormy Daniels over a decade ago. And Bragg is making the tortured argument that these NDAs constitute 
campaign finance violations, which is a federal crime. It's not a state crime. He doesn't even have jurisdiction over the issue. So all in all, the Democrats' weaponized legalism appears to be leading nowhere. And as Trump's poll numbers continue to rise, all these efforts will appear to more and more voters as pathetic acts of political desperation.